Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this particular video, we're going to be looking at how to write a significant statement for a research paper. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. All right, so we need to, of course, kind of summarize what we looked at in the past before we jump into this um, for people who have not seen the prior videos. So as you should already know and be familiar with, research begins with a problem. This is number one. And then you read about the problem and you begin to ask questions about the problem. Questions. This is the first main steps in the process. From there, you got to explain how you're going to answer your questions about your problem. That's it. Then you share your answers to your questions about your problem. And then lastly, you want to, you know, make a conclusion or interpret or connect what you learned with the works of others. So, you know, conclusion, discussion, whatever you want to call it about your answers to your questions about your problem. That is what we do in the research process. And so each of these critical components has a chapter within the overall structure of the article or the dissertation, thesis, whatever. So chapter one is where you really try to lay out your problem and maybe your questions. It really depends on the discipline. Chapter two is where you really try to capture all those really cool things you read um, to help you figure out how to formulate your questions and your problem to make sure they're clear and to get insights into how you might want to answer your questions. And of course, all of the stuff that you read helps you to formulate the last chapter as well, which is your chapter five. Chapter three is connected with how you're going to answer your questions. We call this the methodology. By the way, chapter two is called a review of literature. Chapter one is called an introduction. This is nothing new. Chapter four is your findings. That's the answers to your questions. And of course, chapter five is the discussion and conclusions. So this is where you uh, try to frame your, your new learning, your new knowledge in the frameworks of what other people have done in the past. This is the core of the process. And so what we've been focusing on, focusing on in the last few videos has been this introduction section. So let's zoom in on that now. So introduction. The introduction has several key components to it as you've already should be aware. And so you're going to have your problem. That's generally first. Then of course, you're going to have your purpose statement. After that, it depends. It, you might have your research questions next, or this might be in your chapter two. It all depends on who you're working with. Um, and the star of this particular show is going to be the significant statement. Significance. That's off the next and other things that might be in there are your delimitations again, especially for a dissertation, your limitations. And what I mean by delimitations is like you're trying to put a box around your study. Like these are things I'm going to cover. These are things I will not cover. Limitations are like where you share the weaknesses of your study. And then you might have definitions in there as well, but this might be moved to your chapter two as well. It really depends on who you're working with. So as I've already said, our star today is going to be significance. This is the guy that we're really going to be focusing on. And so with the significant statement, and I can make this complicated, but the simplest way to do this is the significance has two parts. You're going to have your audience and you're going to have why they should read it. So audience, and I like to say blessing audience who should read your paper blessing, why they should read your paper. What are they going to get out of it? People are busy. Why should someone spend, you know, maybe an hour, hour and a half reading your paper? Yes, you can read a paper fast, but if you really want to understand and appreciate it, you have to read it slow. You have to sink it in and you have to start developing counter arguments and, you know, you know, criticizing it, looking for weaknesses. And that takes a lot more time than just flying through a paper. And so when you are writing your introduction, you have to make sure that you are able to almost sell your paper very well. And this happens in really your problem statement and also in your significance. Of course, you also got to ask intriguing questions, which is not always easy for people to do. 
and you also have to have a clear purpose. It is not easy to line these things up so that people can follow your thought process. In fact, almost nobody can follow your thought process. I'm telling you that from experience. You always have to go over and revise it and revise it. What's clear in your mind is not clear to someone else. Whoops, here we go. All right, so here right here, we have an example of an actual significant statement written by yours truly. And you can see it's very short, very simple. There's only two sentences in this particular example. Now, I kind of did this one backwards. I start with the blessing, but the order doesn't matter as long as all the parts are there. And then I end with the audience or who should read my paper. So let me go ahead and read this to you. So as such, developing insights into the major factors. So developing insights, this is the blessing into the major factors that contribute to academic dishonesty can lead to strategies. Here's another blessing for intervention in order to curtail this epidemic of scholarly duplicity. Next sentence, administrators, teachers, and even students could benefit from seeing what leads to academic dishonesty at university campuses. So here I clearly lay out the, the benefit, insights, strategies, reducing academic dishonesty, who should read this, administrators, teachers, and even students. Administrators and teachers deal with academic dishonesty all the time. Students might be curious about what's motivating their friends to do things like this. And so again, other people are going to have different styles on how to approach this, but you start with somebody else's, someone else's framework, and then you build your own style on top of that. So this will help to get you started. The most important thing is that when you are doing research is that you must learn the appropriate style for communicating your research. Some people are very good at coming up with innovative, challenging ideals to study but maybe they struggle with the actual writing part. Other people, they're very good at the writing part, but they're not so good at coming up with the, the innovative, creative ideas to push you know, the research boundaries further. If you want to survive in academics, you have to be good at one or the other. Superstars are good at both. So either you're very creative and coming up with insights and new ways to push the research boundaries, or you're one heck of a writer you know how to follow the thought processes of the research experience because you have to follow these steps so that people can appreciate what you're saying. If you don't have all these components that I'm sharing with you, people are not going to be able to understand what you're saying because they're anticipating things being said a certain way. And so this is very, very important that you're able to follow these steps. You know what a problem statement is. You know what a purpose statement is. You know what a significant statement is. You know that they need to be there. The order doesn't matter as much as whether or not they are there. And again, if people don't like it, they can give you critique to improve it. So someone might have a, excuse me, somebody might have a problem with what I'm saying here. All right, that, trust me, this is not good enough for somebody. But here's the thing, it's there. And since it's there, they can give me advice on how to improve this, how to make it better, how I can enhance my communication so that more people can appreciate what I'm saying. But if this is not even there, now there's a problem because the reader is anticipating something, but it's not present. All right, now one more thing I want to show you is that you can lump together your purpose statement and your significant statement into one paragraph and save a lot of space. Again, this is more for when you're writing for academic journals rather than you know for dissertations where you have more space. So this stuff in bold right here, this is my purpose statement and everything in italics, that is my significant statement. So I don't think I need to read this to you because you know it's kind of boring, but you can see how all the parts are working together now to create a paragraph and not just isolated pieces. Remember, all these things we're talking about, they work together to share your ideas with people you're not able to talk and communicate with face to face. And so we have to understand how it's a team process to make this happen. So what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna to try to summarize what we discussed here and then conclude the video. So in this particular video, we look primarily at the significant statement and how to write that. And so 
The significant statement has two main components to it. You have the audience, the person who should read your paper, and then you have the blessing, what they're going to get from reading your paper. And the significant statement plays a key part in the chapter one or the introduction of your paper. Often it's towards the end, but again, it all really depends on who you're working with. And it kind of serves as a way to, you know, in that chapter in many situations, but not always. Another thing we talked about is the importance of understanding how all these parts work together so that you can share and communicate your ideas with people who may not, you may not be able to work with on a personal level. So I want to thank you very much for watching this video. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the director of educational research techniques. Thank you for listening and take care.